welcome to Dawes Geek. Would you believe that I'm in Fedora 28? You really shouldn't be shocked by this because I love trying out all the different distros out there. I love distro hopping. I kind of have to for the Destination Links podcast I'm a part of and my own channel to make sure that I can tell you the things I like, the things I don't like. And I have not used Fedora since two years ago when I decided I was going to start using Linux. When I started the 30 Days of Linux series that you can check out in 2016, when I first started using Linux, I tried Fedora. This was off camera, wasn't even recorded, and I could not get it to install. A lot of my computers back then were NVIDIA based. I think it had something to do with Wayland. I don't even know if that was the default back then. Probably just had to do with the fact that I was an experienced but Ubuntu, and those were much easier to kind of grasp as a new user and install and get to using. So that's pretty much why I stuck there. Now, recently, recently, I did a complete AMD build. Check this beauty out. We've got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, AMD Ryzen 7 2700X, a Radeon RX Vega 56, and a nice NVMe M2 hard drive. So that means... I want to try all kinds of different distros out there. And being AMD, I don't have to go install third-party drivers and all of that. I can just literally install it. I have the drivers I need to start gaming. And man, you are going to be impressed with the frames per second that we're getting out of Fedora. I've been blown away. I think it's faster getting at least 20 to 30 frames per second more than Kubuntu is 18.04. So that's interesting. I'm not quite sure why, but it's interesting and it is happening. So this uses the Mesa version 18.0.2. It does have a later kernel version, which may be the answer between the 18.04 mystery. It's using kernel version 4.16.15, as far as I can tell. It also has some cool window manager features too built in. This is by default. If I hold the Windows key and hit left arrow key, right arrow key, up arrow key, down arrow key, uh, I can do page up and page down to move to different workstations holding the super key. That's pretty cool, and there are more shortcuts there. Speaking of, we're going to go through settings, and you'll see shortcuts here as well. Settings, this is kind of like a vanilla No, I like their implementation of Gnome and Fedora. I think it's more of a vanilla. You can let me know in the comments below implementation than the Ubuntu version of Gnome. I don't know why, but something about this just feels better. And I don't have extra extensions installed yet or anything. It just seems like it's faster and snappier. My opinion, I could be wrong there. Maybe it's the same thing, uh, but it just feels that way to me. Any case, uh, you know, all your settings are in one place here, which is nice within the GNOME implementation. So you don't have to go searching through a bunch of different setting menus or options out there. It's all right here. Now, people will talk about the customization or lack of customization abilities in GNOME with extensions. I think that kind of makes that a little mute, but extensions aren't officially super supported, so sometimes they can break and there's all this stuff. But for what it is, just using it out of the box for a couple of days now, I'm enjoying it. And the workflow isn't the greatest. I mean, from compared to like an i3 window manager, to me, I think the workflow is faster and easier to get to applications versus going up here to activities and then having to go down here and click this, and then having to go to all or search up here, you know, it's it's multiple steps instead of a single step that you can do like using J4 menu or something along those lines. You just hit a control, you know, you hit a key combination and do that, but you can use GNOME search tools and things like that to improve upon that if you want. So it's not the fastest workflow out there, but I think you can customize it in such a way and add different menus through the extensions that Saying it's not customizable isn't exactly fair either. We could change our sound through here, power network devices that we want to install, change orientations, keyboards, mouse and touchpad, printers, Thunderbolt, Wacom tablets, and the color of our individual items. Now here is where we can set our shortcut keys. So move workspaces, move one monitor down, move window one monitor to the left. So shift plus super plus right. Let's try it. Boom, I just moved that entire program over to the right and left side. So a lot of the cool implementations and shortcuts built in that you would expect from a window manager uh, that provide a lot of convenience for a window manager. And I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, it doesn't have quite the tiling effects that uh, a, a standard window manager would have, but they're there and you could use things like TileX. And of course you could kind of create your own terminal windowing capabilities there. 
So under activities, you can see these are some of your favorites that you can pin here, your activities panel, your search, and then we can go here and look at the frequently used ones and we can you look at all. Now system monitor, this really isn't a fair comparison because frankly, I am recording an OBS at 60 frames per second right now. So it's going to be using a lot of the, you know, resources to, to perform that operation. So this obviously isn't steady at rest because OBS is running. But to me, this looks pretty standard uh, usage from when I'm using other distros, maybe slightly higher than say an XFCE, but not by much or anything noticeable, especially with a system like this. You're not gonna notice a whole lot there. So as far as package management, one of the two critiques I hear about Fedora, one I think is fair, the other one not so much. The one critique is the package management system. So you have your software store here, and now in this version of Fedora, Fedora 28, you will have an option when you open this saying, do you wanna install third-party repositories via the RPM? You could click yes, and you'll have access to some of those there. Additionally, you can install third-party repositories that are proprietary, and I have all that done with an install script. I will show you guys that I've written for Fedora now. A lot of you guys are familiar with the one I did for Ubuntu. I've done one with Fedora. It does all the media codecs. It does the RPM setup. It does all of that for you and installs a bunch of the programs, well, that you see here. Sublime Text, Signal, Simple Notes, uh, Chromium, Pitos, if you use Pandora, Steam, all of that stuff, SMTube. It does all of this, the Synology NAS that I use, it does all of that for you through a nice menu GUI that you can pick which software you want, click run, does all the installations. You don't have to search for any commands or anything like that. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I would love for an experienced Fedora user to take a look and make sure um, there are not some better ways that I could do the package management there. But if you go to doskeekcommunity.com, it will be available for you as a Fedora install script there. So you can see, you just download this, you do chmod plus X or right click and give it executable permissions and run it as sudo and you could do the install. And it looks something like this here. So you have the option to install RPM free and non-free, install media codecs and VLC, Zoom, Mumble clients, Thunderbird, all this stuff. You check which everything's off by default. You check which ones you want, click enter. It does the install. And these are the install commands down here and they're all categorized into nice, beautiful sections for you, which was an enhancement I did to the Ubuntu one that's now available there. So that was me doing research on Fedora's package management system because that's something that I've heard complaints about. So regarding the package management system, Fedora focuses heavily on the free and open source, although they are being more open in this version than ever to third party options out there, I guess, realizing that in a lot of cases it's necessary. So from that aspect, I can understand that people may be slightly more difficult, I guess, if you're used to the Ubuntu way of installing through apt and through their software store to get to some of these things. But once you learn this, it's super simple. And I would say if you learn this way of installing, utilizing DNF and flat packs and that type of stuff, there's really no big difference between using a Deb apt system versus this. Uh, whichever one you learned, you're going to be more familiar with. But catching on to using DNF instead of app was like seconds of time. So I don't think that's a fair critique of Fedora. The second one is a fair critique, and that is Fedora uses Wayland by default. I think this is a huge mistake. Um, I am excited about the potential that Wayland has, but it is not ready for mainstream use on a desktop environment. Now, a lot of people who like Fedora because it's kind of based on Red Hat and those things are administrators. Maybe they stay within terminals and things like that and aren't worried about gaming or screen recording and that type of stuff. But as your general population using their computers, screen recording and that type of stuff, using simple screen recorder you can in Wayland, using OBS, it can only grab windows, it couldn't grab screens, I couldn't get my Logitech camera to initiate within it. As soon as I switched to X, I had no issues. It instantly, everything worked again. Uh, that I believe is also the issue when I tried to install Fedora years ago is that because I had NVIDIA and it defaults to Wayland, and we know, especially back then, NVIDIA and Wayland did not play together at all, I was having issues uh, getting past. I think I would just get the black screen with the blinking white cursor. So there are ways to come over that now that I'm more experienced, but didn't know that then. 
So Ubuntu, when they tried to play with, I think in 17.04, 17.10, something like that, they tried to play with Wayland as well as a default. They at least had it so that it detected you had an NVIDIA card and switched you to X automatically so that your system wouldn't go down. In this case with Fedora, it starts with Wayland. And then if you want, you can log out, click your name, click the cog wheel at the bottom, choose X, which I did here and install. Also, Wayland is extremely... Uh, half the frames per second I was getting in Wayland in gaming. Then I got an X. Not everybody games, but again, I don't think Wayland is ready for the mainstream. I don't know why they're using it as default. That's my biggest critique of Fedora. I don't think, I think they should be using X as default. And if people want to use Wayland, they can select the cog and switch to Wayland until Wayland is actually ready because to me, it's still a testing environment. That's my opinion. Now, I've shown you around here. We've shown you the settings, the nice drop downs, the notifications over here. The ability to install extensions, of course, is through the note, which you can use through my script, uh, the Chrome shell extensions, which is just a weird name, by the way, because I always think of Google Chrome when I see it. And then from your browser, you can install various extensions to change GNOME up. The interface is very pretty. The icons are gorgeous. The um, default wallpaper that you log into with Fedora is awesome as well. You can right click on the desktop, change your background. That's the default wallpaper right there. That nice kind of fiber optics, black and blue there. Of course, we had to put the DOS Geek swag on that. But right now, the most important thing is that I show you some gaming and show you some of the beastly numbers that we get here. So <clears throat> let's get some steam action up in here. We're going to do some ballistic overkill and show you what this is all about. I wish those were the frames per second I was getting while I was gaming, because that would be fire. Um, all right, so let's go here. And we're just going to, I don't want to bail out on somebody's game. So we're just going to create our own password protected and run in here. This is on the Vega 56 again. You can look at my Kubuntu video if you want to see how it went in Kubuntu as far as frames per second. So let's do this map. We will jump in here and see what kind of frame action we're getting. 1100 frames per second beats everything. I wish. All right. So this is with the default drivers. I installed no additional Let's drivers. This. this is not the AMD GPU drivers or anything like that. So 249 frames per second. What is beeping at me? Very annoying. In any case, you can see that it drops as we're running around as expected into different areas and things are happening. 186, 188, 182. You start shooting, drops into 160s, 170s. But some incredible performance out of Fedora from a gaming perspective. Again, this is in the X session, not the Wayland session, because you wouldn't even be able to see this unless I was using simple screen recorder in the Wayland session. Well, I guess I could, I could record it as a window. Could have done that, but I won't. I've got frustrations with Wayland because I think people are pushing it faster than it's going to be ready. But in any case, this is some pretty awesome frames per second. Again, you can compare that against my Kubuntu video. If you want to go look, 18.04. I think I'm going to stick with Fedora for a while. I'm really digging it. I like everything about it so far. It just feels right on this system. I've been playing with OpenSUSE as well, which I really dig and really liking too. But for some reason, maybe it's just the name Fedora and my beard and my tendencies towards hippie, hippieism. I'm really liking it. So what do you think? I'm not a Fedora expert by any stretch of the imagination. I am simply an enthusiast here that is playing with Fedora and really liking what I'm seeing. So I wanted to share that with you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Maybe you're a Fedora expert, can give me some tips, tricks, things I haven't done or you didn't see or I didn't explain in the GNOME desktop environment. We talked about the kernel. Most of the stuff we talked about was desktop related. We talked about the kernel, some of the message drivers, some of the default abilities to run your AMD card, which is pretty standard with any of the Linux kernels out of the box. Um, some of the software that comes pre-installed with Fedora is very minimal, very minimal installs a software installation when it comes to Fedora. So you can use my install script to install the extra codecs and everything you're gonna need for media and stuff for typical desktop, desktop usage. But otherwise, I dig it, man. I'm liking Fedora.
Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch the video.